From the King Faisal Hall at the Intercontinental Hotel in Riyadh, we are here for the first annual International Conference on Blended Learning. The event is being held from November 21st through November 23rd. And while we're here, we're going to be meeting with some of the keynote speakers and those who have submitted scientific papers to discuss what they have learned about the evolving field of blended learning. ولعل ابرز التحولات النوعيه التي تشهدها مؤسسات التعليم العالي بالمملكه هذا في هذا القطاع المهم هو تجربه الجامعه السعوديه الالكترونيه التي تقدم نموذجا تعليميا جديدا ومختلفا ومتمايزا يتكامل مع بقيه نماذج التعليم العالي في المملكه حيث تتبنى هذه الجامعة الفتية نموذج التعليم المدمج الذي أصبح يمثل توجها عالميا في مجال التعليم العالي بل إنه يعد أحد السمات الفارقة للجامعات الرائدة يتصدر التعليم المدمج قائمة الاتجاهات الحديثة في التعليم العالي منذ عام 2012 ولقد جاء هذا المؤتمر مبادرة ورغبة من الجامعة السعودية الإلكترونية إلى تنظيمه كأول مؤتمر دولي حول التعليم المدمج في المملكة العربية السعودية ولطرح, ما فريد ولطرح فريد من الأبحاث والدراسات واستقطاب الخبراء من جميع أنحاء العالم لعرض آخر المستجدات والتطورات في التعليم المدمج بما يتناسب مع رؤية المملكة العربية السعودية عشرين ثلاثين Okay, joining us now is Dr. William Swart. He's a professor of marketing and supply chain management at East Carolina University, and he is also one of the keynote speakers for the International Conference on Blended Learning here at King Faisal Conference Hall, or center, a hall, I guess it is, in Riyadh. Uh, Dr. Swart, first, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure, my pleasure. Uh, I understand from some of your biography you spent a lot of time in the corporate world. Uh, what did you take from the corporate world and how did you go from the corporate world to, to learning, edu higher education? Well, it, it wasn't that simple. I went um, into higher education first. I always intended to go to the corporate world, but things happened and I got a master's, which I hadn't planned on getting. And then I wound up getting a PhD, which I had not necessarily planned on getting. But I always wanted to be, to do things. I was not a theoretician. I wanted to apply things. And a lot of my um, professors that I had when I was getting my degrees were teaching difficult subjects, supposedly that had application to industry. But whenever you ask the question, how does this apply? Uh, they would say, let x equals five and y equals six and plug it into the equation and that's how you apply it, which is not um, anything that made any sense to me. So I made a mental commitment that um, if I was going to go into academia, then I wanted to be able to be successful at applying it before I taught it. And I define being successful as reaching corporate officer status. I said, if I get into industry and I do well enough so I can become a corporate vice president, then the credibility of whether I know how to apply it is not an issue. And then I can go back into academia afterwards and um, have good stories to tell, good examples, and and if somebody asks me how do you apply it, I can answer that question. You're one of the rare, I called it the rare breed, and when I was in college years and years ago, that somebody that brought the really real life experience to the classroom, and that really benefits the kids quite a bit. You find that the stories you can tell, the war stories, help liven up the classroom and, and really bring some knowledge to the oh, class. Oh, you know, absolutely, and I don't use a textbook. I, I use, um, 
my own experiences, um, my own case studies from my own experience, problems from my own experience. So, um, and part of that is because, as I alluded to at the in the conference, um, textbooks are written for professors to teach, not for students to learn. And when I came out of the corporate sector, I had this knowledge that you don't do this stuff the way it's taught in the books. In the books, it's compartmentalized to subject A, B, and C, whereas in practice, you put together what's necessary to get the job done. So I, want to, I wanted to write a book on, on, on how it's really done. And every publisher that I talked to, they said, oh, great idea. Now, how does it compare to so-and-so's book? And I said, it doesn't. So how does it compare to, what does it compare to? I said, nothing, there's nothing like it on the market. So then they say, well, if there's nothing like that on the market, then it must not be marketable. So thank you very much. Isn't there a challenge? You come from the business world, mm -hmm. myself, having been in the business world. We find there's a lot of challenge on getting the kids out of the college system and plugging them into a corporate environment. Do you find that this is a challenge to get them prepared for the corporate world? No, because that's what I do. Um, but again, I'm just one cog in a big machine. So, um, you know, but my, my, I, I have, and I, at the moment I teach mostly MBAs. And almost the vast majority are online students. And the vast majority of those have jobs. So, so that's not really an issue. But I find a lot of them saying, oh my gosh, you can, I can apply this right now. Just got a letter a couple days ago saying, oh, I just got promoted because of what I'm learning in your class. Yeah. So do you find that the, uh, I guess, the e-learning, the blended learning that they're teaching here or bringing to this conference, is that something that universities in America and the, really on the global market are going to have to start pursuing? Well, in, in reality, in my opinion, there is no such thing as pure learning anymore because there's technology used in every mm -hmm. classroom. Um, so the, the question then is, how do you do blended learning? And even in this kind of an environment, I hear some faculty say, oh, well, my students work problems when they're at home and I lecture when they come to class. Well, that is totally contrary to my view of things because why would you lecture if you can make a video and use your type in a much uh, more personal fashion to help students with what they really need as opposed to you saying this is what you'll get whether you need it or not. Now when you say record, are you talking about pre-recording lectures sure. oh, even? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I find that um, recording live lectures, I, I, I always did that even when I did not do blended simply so my students would have a recourse to go back to if they didn't come to class mm -hmm. one time or if they didn't understand, they could always go back to the recorded lectures. But the recorded lectures are of a real class are very inefficient to somebody who wants to learn because the recorded lectures have questions and answers and pauses and, and the typical comment that I would get is, oh gosh, you know, I, I could have learned this in 20 minutes, but I had mm. to sit through all the rest of the stuff. So I migrated from my original face-to-face -face lectures to more direct content without all of the blank spaces, so to speak. Do you find that we have to speed up the education process, the information delivery, content delivery for students, with the te technology being such a disruptive force? Well, quite frankly, um, in my courses, students have the material that they should know when they come to class. They have an incentive for knowing it before they come to class because then they can finish their assignment and leave for the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, students dictate the pace in the class, not me. I respond to students' need as opposed to students responding to my timing sequence. 
So as students become more self-motivated, the whole process of learning and teaching really becomes much more simplified for you then, doesn't it? Well, simplified in the actual class, but much more complicated in preparing the materials. Oh, so when you say preparing the materials, are you saying the, the videos and the ah. and the exercises and the problems and and uh, the assessments involved and so on? So it sounds like what you're saying is the blended learning program or the e-learning program really is putting more responsibility on the professor to produce content that's engaging for the students. Um, absolutely, um, it, it's. If that is effective, like in my case, I I teach one phase two, one blended course, let's say, and then two fully online courses. What would you give as advice? And I know a lot of professors are a little shy of camera shy. Mm -hmm. They're shy of maybe being critiqued themselves. Uh, what would you recommend to professors? You don't have to be in front of a camera. We I use a technology called Camtasia Video. I can sit in front of the computer, I put a set of headphones on, and there's absolutely no need why my face should appear on anything. Really? But, so you're doing really audio? No, vi audio video. Audio video through a camera on yeah, your but, laptop. But, but my face doesn't have value. So I guess my question would be for the, the professors out there is how should they go about producing this content? Well, if you go and um, and uh, several, uh, but most professors are familiar with this PowerPoint. Yes. Okay, and they use it in class. Okay. So PowerPoint, you can push a button and you can record the lecture. That's true. So you can start with essentially, instead of going through and talking through your PowerPoint slides live, why not do that? Um, when you're at home or whatever, do your lecture and then tell students to have that before they come to class and then focus on helping them with their questions, giving them an assignment that they can prove that they learned what they had and go through some coaching and consultation with students. So in today's, I guess, education world, it's uh, kind of an exciting time to be an educator then. Well, absolutely. Um, if if you are interested in, in innovating, I I get a um, big joy, so to speak, out of playing with the technology, using the technology, and trying different things. Uh, some people are not, you know, that that um, enamored, but the recording a lecture is much simpler. It doesn't require that you be on camera. It doesn't require that like, there's my videotaping you. Any any laptop can serve that purpose. If you want your face in there, that's fine. You can put a camera in and, and have it show your face. But again, the, all research that I've seen indicates that um, having a face doesn't add anything to the information. So, so video then is not important. It's really the content of the audio. Well, the certain face of the professor is never important. You and I might be better served to just do audio. Huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, everybody. Thanks. I, I would not make anybody endure my face for that long. There you go. Everybody, I hope you've uh, enjoyed this short uh, interview with Dr. William Swart. Uh, I know you're busy and you need to get back to mm -hmm. some of your other work. Uh, he, again, is the professor of marketing and supply chain management at East Carolina University and a keynote speaker for the International Conference on blended learning here uh, in Riyadh at the King Faisal Auditorium. Thanks so much for joining us. It was a pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Yeah.